Are you excited about using OPA with Terraform? Well, first, you have to learn about Rego, and that's what we're going to do in this video. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellabance, Ned1313 on Twitter for now, also nedinthecloud.com. And thank you for joining me for the next in the series of using OPA with Terraform. Today, we're going to explore the domain-specific language that OPA, or Open Policy Agent, uses, and it's called Rego, and it's spelled R-E-G-O. So, okay, sure, that's how it's spelled. Now, if you haven't watched the previous video where I introduced the concept of using OPA and Rego with Terraform, yeah, maybe check that out first, but I'm going to move forward. And in this video, we're going to get into the Rego language and its syntax with some hands-on examples. So let's jump over to the code editor and get started. All right, I got Visual Studio Code open here and the repository that we're working with is called Learning OPA and Terraform and it's available in my list of GitHub repositories. You can also find the link down in the description if you're looking for it. And I only have two folders so far. This is a work in progress and it will expand out as I create more tutorials and lessons around this concept. But today we're gonna to be digging into the second directory here, which is Rego Basics. And if we look inside the contents of that directory, we have a readme, which will walk you through what I'm talking about in this video, if you wanna kind of do it on your own. And I also have a JSON document. And the reason for that is that Rego likes to interpret JSON. And so why not provide you with some JSON data you can use to play around with and manipulate? If we look at the contents of this JSON data, it's basically a mock-up of a menu that I might have at Ned's Taco Truck. And so we have a list of drinks on the menu and we also have a list of entrees. I didn't build it out any more complicated than that because I wanted to keep it relatively simple, but you get the idea. We've got some JSON data that we can play with and filter and manipulate using Rego. Okay, so let me close that up for a second and talk a little bit more about Rego and getting started with OPA. Now, personally, the way that I learn best is by jumping right in and being able to test out commands. It's one of the reasons I love PowerShell so much and also Terraform to a lesser degree, because in both of those situations, I can write a little config and then I can run it in the terminal and see what happens. You can get the same experience with OPA. The first thing you'll need to do is download the latest OPA binary from their repository. Again, a link is in the readme for that one. So if I open up the readme here, and let's get a preview view of it, because I think that's a little bit nicer. There we go. In here, I have a link to the releases from their GitHub page. So you can go there, download the binary, and start using it yourself. Now let me go ahead and pull up the terminal first. There we go. And I already have OPA installed. So to check your version of OPA, you can just simply do OPA version and it should output the version that you're using as well as some other information. I'm using 0.48. You might be using something a little bit newer, but it should all this should be forwards compatible. Now, if you want to get into their interactive shell, you can do that by running OPA run. So OPA run will drop you into the interactive shell. They call it REPL, which stands for read, evaluate, print, loop. REPL, very easy. So now that we're in this shell, we can start running some OPA, some Rego statements and viewing the results. So we've already done run. And if we want to get a list of the things that we can do, we can type something like help. And help will give you a list of all of the commands. Let me bounce this up so it's a little easier to see. These are all the subcommands that are available within the interactive shell. Now we can also just add a statement here, a basic true or false statement. So let's go with zero is greater than one. Well, obviously that's false. And so it just returns false. So you can do evaluations dynamically in the shell but we probably want to do something a little more useful. And that's why I provided the JSON document. In order to load that data, we're going to exit out of the interactive shell, out of REPL. And now we're going to run OPA run again, but this time 
for the first argument after it, we're gonna specify taco truck.json. And I'm already in the directory where that file exists. Now, when we do that, that JSON data is loaded as part of the data document that Opal works with. So a little bit of background here, I swear this won't be too long, but basically when you load data in, Rego and well, Opa has a model that it's building here, a document, if you will. And that document is made up of the base document, which is any static data you load when you launch REPL or you launch an Opa session, and any virtual information that is from the evaluated rules that you add to your Opa module, which in this parlance is called a Rego package. Now, right now we haven't created any rules, but we have our data and we can view that by typing data. And this is the data that's already loaded. This is all data that was loaded from the file. We don't have anything in from the virtual document side of things because we have not yet added any rules. So maybe we do want to add some rules. What might a rule look like? Well, the syntax for this is pretty straightforward. Before we get into the rules, maybe we can just mess around with the data that we already have loaded. And so if we want to view the contents of the menu, the syntax follows standard dot notation. And if you've worked with JQ at all, this should feel very familiar because you're working with JSON data. So we know that we have a menu inside of our data. And if we do data dot menu, it'll give us the menu item. Now we know we also have drinks inside of the menu. So if we do dot drinks, <laughs> if I spell it right, we'll get our list of drinks. Now, what if we want an element from that list? Well, you use a square bracket and then you specify the index of that element starting with zero. So if I want the first drink, which is soda, I'll put in zero and there we go, I get soda. So now you're getting an idea how to work with the data structure that's been loaded here. If this is unfamiliar to you, then digging into JQ and just working with JSON would probably be pretty helpful at this point. So that's how we work with our data model. Now we might not want to type out the whole path every time. So we have this helpful keyword called import that allows us to shorten things. So for instance, I can type import data.menu.drinks. And when I do that, it actually creates basically a placeholder called drinks that will refer to this longer path data.menu.drinks. So if I type in drinks here, I'll now get the list of drinks and I don't have to use that longer path. Now, if I want a more specialized name, I don't wanna just use whatever the end of that statement was. Let's say I wanted one for the entrees that are in here. I could call entrees and then say as, what keyword do I wanna to use to refer to this path? And I could call this meals. So now if I type in meals, I get a list of the entrees. So I've made the way of referencing a longer path a little bit simpler with import. Import can also import other packages that you've designed or some internal packages that exist inside of Rego. All right, so now we've got a pretty good handle on manipulating our data with standard dot notation and how to add some shorthand to our configuration so we don't have to have this longer statement. We have a shortcut of a kind. Now I think we're ready to create our first rule. And so let's see what rule we had in mind. Let me scroll down here. We already went through all of this. We are going to add this rule and let me just copy and paste it and then I'll explain it. First drink or first underscore drink and then the assignment operator, which is the colon equals and we're gonna set it equal to drinks and then the first, first element in our drinks list. So we've now defined a rule in our package REPL. Oh, we have a package now? What's this? Well, <clears throat> our statements, like our import statements and our rules need to go in a package. That's how Rego and OPA works. And so since we didn't specify a package, when we're in the REPL session, it automatically creates a package for you called REPL. And if we type in show, it's gonna show us the rules that we've created so far. We have two import rules for our shorthand for drinks and meals. And we have one rule where we're assigning that first drink 
to a variable called first drink. And if we want to evaluate what first drink is, we can simply type in first drink, we get back soda. If we look at our data structure now, now that we've added some rules into our package, we now have some additional information at the bottom of our data document. We have the base document, which is the data we loaded, and then we have our virtual document, which includes the values that are evaluated from our REPL package, in this case, assigning soda to first to drink. Okay, now we're building up this mental model, all right? We've got, we've got a basic rule. Let's go with a slightly more advanced rule. So in here, I have a slightly more advanced rule. Let me scroll down to that, and it's this one here. I'm gonna paste it in, and then we'll talk through it a little bit. All right, I've added this new rule called chicken dishes. And let me kind of walk you through what the syntax is saying and then explain it again in a little more detail. So we're creating this variable called chicken dishes. And the value we want to assign it is any meal that the filling is equal to chicken. And the way, the way that we go about that is what this statement is actually saying is, I want a variable called chicken dishes and assign me any of the dishes where the dishes.filling equals chicken. Now that's not obvious when you first look at this, or at least it's not obvious for me, right? That's not intuitive. However, if we look at the data structure, it definitely worked. If we look in the REPL section of our data document, there's the two chicken dishes that exist. So because the syntax is a little non-intuitive, what they've done is started adding keywords that you can substitute in to make the syntax more intuitive. But if you want to use those um, keywords, you actually have to import them as part of your import statements. So what you can do is import future, because this is future facing, keywords. And you can either import all of the future keywords or you can do dot and which keyword you want to use. So we'll just import all of them. Okay, we've imported our keywords. And if you want to remove a rule, what you can do is run unset. So I can unset chicken dishes here. I've removed that rule from our, uh, from our package. If we look at our package, that rule is no longer there. We just have the first drink rule. So let's look at another way of structuring this. This rule is actually using the keywords now instead of that slightly convoluted syntax. And I think it reads a lot more straightforward. Chicken dishes contains dishes and dishes are some dishes and meals. So give me the list of things in meals, store those in dishes, but only store those where dishes.filling equals chicken. And so that's what's contained in chicken dishes. I think for me, I think this syntax is a little clearer. And if I go ahead and highlight it here and bring this back up, we've created that rule. We could go to data again. We get the same values in chicken dishes, but the nice thing is now I think the syntax is a little bit clearer in how it works. Now there's two kinds of rules in Rego. There's partial rules where you're storing a value in the variable, and then there's complete rules where it evaluates to a true or false. If we wanna construct a complete rule, we need some sort of statement in there, some sort of test or assertion that can be tested and will either evaluate to true or false. So for our last rule, we're gonna create one called have chicken dishes, and we'll set it equal to count of chicken dishes is greater than zero. And we know that it's greater than zero, so this should evaluate to true. So let me pull that back up here. There we go. We've added that rule. And if we do data now, we can see that have chicken dishes is now set to true. All right, so we've got our partial rules where we assign a value, but it hasn't evaluated to true or false. And then we have our complete rules where it evaluates to true or false. Now there is a bit more to the language. And what I'd recommend is at the bottom of this readme, I do include a link to the Rego reference where you can get an idea of all the syntax, the special keywords that exist, the built-in functions for Rego, and some other suggested exercises to get a little more comfortable with the syntax. But I hope this has given you a, a good start and a firm grounding on using Rego. And now in the next video, we're going to apply that knowledge to actual 
Terraform JSON formatted execution plans and use it to start testing for some contents and some policies we might want to apply to those Terraform execution plans. All right, that is going to do it for this episode of using OPA with Terraform. I hope you enjoyed it. I do have a playlist going. Uh, if you want to keep up to date, you can subscribe to the channel. And if you're the kind of person who likes notifications, you can hit the bell. That's going to do it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. Opa! I love saying it. It's just, it's fun to say, right? Opa! Rego! Opa! Bye!